national treasure. Millions of people each year come to enjoy our beautiful beaches and coastal environments. While it is a source of fun and recreation, the Atlantic coast is also the livelihood for hundreds of thousands of coastal residents, and it's an economic engine for the Commonwealth of Virginia. In 2012, domestic travelers spent $21.5 billion on transportation, lodging, food, recreation, as well as retail shopping in Virginia. Restaurant and lodging sales for Virginia Beach alone generated nearly $1.5 billion in 2014. Virginia ranked as the nation's third largest marine products producer in 2012, with a value of nearly $192 million and accounting for over 11,000 Virginia jobs. Saltwater sport fishing alone brings in $1.3 billion and provides over 15,000 jobs. The Atlantic is home to many endangered species, like the North Atlantic right whale, of which only 500 exist in the wild. These animals and other marine mammals are threatened by all drilling activities offshore, including seismic air gun blasting. Well, the proposed drilling off the coast of Virginia and the Atlantic Ocean is unprecedented. There's never been oil and gas production off our coasts, and now isn't the time to, talk, to start that. Um, we have numerous endangered species living off the Atlantic coast. They're threatened by plastic pollution, nutrient runoff, ocean warming, ocean acidification. This isn't the time to add the risk of an oil spill on top of all the things that they're facing right now. Um, one of the most rare marine mammals in the world, the Atlantic right whale, uses the Atlantic, the North American coast as their feeding, breeding, migra migrating grounds. And so to risk their extinction from an oil spill would be a tragedy. There's also over 300,000 square miles of critical habitat for loggerhead sea turtles that nests in the Atlantic and the Southeast coasts. They depend on our beaches to come and lay their eggs. They depend on the area offshore, specifically the Sargassum Sea, to raise the young or for the young to grow up um, safe from predators and then the optimum environment to grow fast and continue their migrations. The Gulf of Mexico oil spill shows there's no such thing as safe drilling. Responders there collected over 8,000 seabirds, 1,100 sea turtles, many dolphins and whales were killed by the oil. And so we really don't want to risk that type of experiment off our shores. On top of all that, right now we can't be drilling for more fossil fuels. Climate change is a real and present danger, and these animals know that and feel that. The sea turtles that I mentioned, they're susceptible to sea level rise because their beaches go away underneath the ocean and they can't move up the beaches where there are sea walls or houses. And so their habitat that they depend on is really at risk from sea level rise and climate change. Um, on top of all this, in order to find the oil that we would be drilling for, would take seismic exploration, which requires air gun blasts that are as loud as underwater chemical explosions. And the Department of Interior estimates that there'll be 20 million of these blasts. And these blasts can go on from weeks to months, and it severely disrupts the eating, the reproduction of whales, dolphins, marine mammals that depend on underwater communications and echolocation to find their prey. We just can't add another stressor on those animals because they're fighting for their persistence right now in the face of other threats. Offshore drilling would industrialize our coasts, mar our waters with oil rigs, endanger our fish and wildlife, expose our beaches to toxic spills, and pose a very real threat to these economies and environments on which so many people depend. <laughs> and if there's a spill, like, the economy is, like, all down this coast would just, like, crash. Because that's where all the tourism is during the summer. Right. And, like, fishermen would be out a lot. You'd have all the seafood places gone. That's them. Yeah. <laughs> I like to see food. <laughs> this past February, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management released its 2017-2022 Outer Continental Shelf Oil and Gas Leasing Program. The plan puts the Atlantic and Virginia coasts back on the auction block to be sold to the highest big oil bidder. Is this sounding all too familiar to you? Well, it should, because Virginia was on the chopping block just a few years ago for offshore drilling. And then... 11 people were killed, 
Over 200 million gallons of oil spilled into the ocean, and it affected over 16,000 miles of coastline. Here we are less than five years later, and again, our coast is being put at risk. That's how we say it down south. Uh, I want to thank y'all for having us. My name's Mike Roberts. This is my wife, Tracy. And uh, y'all have to excuse me because I'm not a public speaker. So I'm about to have a heart attack right now, but I'll get, I'm, I'm a, really, I'm just a fisherman, but I'll get through this. When it first happened, when we first heard it was coming to Inland Waters, uh, I was at home and early one morning, a friend of mine called, we knew it was coming. We kept thinking, the fishermen, we know the tides, we know how it works, and we thought if a batch of this oil breaks off and comes west around the mouth of the Mississippi River, that the tide is just gonna take it straight up into Barataria Bay where we live and work. And sure enough, it happened. So that morning, a friend of mine was out fishing. He called me, he said, you gotta come out here. You're not gonna, just come out here, you're not gonna believe this. And so I wasn't prepared for what I was gonna see, so I grabbed my grandson, I said, come on, Scotty, I, I got in a high-speed boat, and I took off running south. I took her with me and another friend of ours. And about halfway out, we had been smelling oil for about a month. You can smell it every night from the spill. It was overwhelming. But on the ride out that day, it was, enough to knock you out. It, it was so overpowering, the smell of this oil. So as we continued south into Barataria Bay, which is our, my fishing ground, you know, being a fisherman, a commercial fisherman, we have our favorite spots to work and all, and Barataria Bay is where I make a lot of my money, and that's mostly where I work is Barataria Bay. That's, that's my spot. So we're headed out to Barataria Bay, and as soon as I got in Barataria Bay, I hit oil. And I was like, well, this can't last too long. So I ran about 10 miles, I'm still in oil. I'm running, I'm running. That entire day, I could not get out of oil. I mean, and, and this is a massive expanse of water. No matter where I rode, I rode to Four Bayou Pass, one of my favorite shrimping areas, oil. I went to Queen Bess Island, another spot, oil. I went to the east side of the bay, oil. It, it was, you just can't imagine it unless you have lived it, the immensity of this oil spill. And, Friends of mine that had already been working on the spill in the Gulf, shrimpers that they had hired, BP had hired them to work, I, I saw them uh, skimming oil with booms. And I, I ran up to them and I was like, man, where's the end of this oil? They said, it doesn't end. It goes on for hundreds of miles in the Gulf of Mexico and it just started coming in here. Well, I, I was floored. I mean, I don't know if any of y'all want to live through that with your coast, but that's what we had to live through. Now, I consider myself a pretty tough guy, and you know, I'm a gung-ho fisherman. I wept. I mean, I did. I, I cried. I had my grandson. I didn't want him to see me crying. The only other time I had cried before that was 30 years ago when my father passed. So that's the impact that, th that that has on you. So, I mean, I'm up here to talk to you people about the possibility of what oil and gas can do. Well, that, that's a possibility, and it's real. And until it happens to you, you don't know the impact of it. Now, I might have been able to run 50 miles further west or 60 miles west and got out of the oil, but it was impacting me directly, and it was impacting an immense area that I make my living in. So, you know, I mean, that, that's the risk you, you run with having oil and gas come to town. You have to understand, where, where we live, oil and gas is king. We have hundreds of communities along our coast, not unlike British Columbia, all fishing communities, and. There's not one community on our coast anymore that doesn't have oil and gas in it in one way, shape, or form. They're there. They're there unloading, loading. They're running service companies out of it. So when they come to town, before long, it's, it's not just one place. They, they take over the whole place. In, in South Louisiana, there's only two things you can do for a living anymore. You either work for the oil companies or you fish. That's basically it. There's a little bit of tourism. There's a little bit of recreational fishing but the predominant employer in South Louisiana is oil and gas. So, you know, if I don't know what's gonna happen in British Columbia, but 30 super tankers visit coastal Louisiana a week, 30 of them. 20 of them unload at Louisiana offshore oil port, and the rest get lightered in what they call lightering areas. They'll, they'll, they'll take the super tanker and they'll take the oil off and put it on smaller tankers, and that, those smaller tankers can go up the Mississippi River. We have 80 chemical plants and refineries between the mouth of the Mississippi River and Baton Rouge. They call where we live Cancer Alley because the cancer rate is so high there. 
And I, there, I'm 51 years old, and I don't know a time when I did not see oil and gas in coastal Louisiana. I've grown up with it. And I have all these grandkids, and I don't know what their futures are going to hold because of oil and gas being in coastal Louisiana. But, you know, when they come, they offer good jobs, uh, you know, well-paying jobs, secure jobs. You have benefits. And, but there's a trade-off. You know, they'll come to town, and they'll, they'll, they'll improve your lifestyle. They really will. But the trade-off is going to be your health and your environment. And they can't get around it. They can sugarcoat it all they want. They do a lot of damage. Damage, damage, damage. That's what oil and gas has done to Louisiana in my lifetime. It's, it's disappearing at an alarming rate. Now, I'm not, you know, I'll be the first one to say we can't not do without oil and gas. I can't shrimp without diesel. I can't drive my truck to deliver shrimp without diesel. But they can do a way, way better job than they do. I've seen probably 100 oil spills in my lifetime living in coastal Louisiana. And, you know, if you guys want to live with that, well, then have oil and gas come to town. And that's the truth. Congress has yet to pass a single law strengthening federal oversight of offshore oil and gas development, drilling safety, or environmental safeguards in the event of a disaster. Current cleanup methods are still incapable of removing more than just a small fraction of the oil that spilled into oceans. And five years after the BP oil disaster, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management has still not instituted any of the major recommendations of the 2010 Gulf Oil Spill Commission. Yeah, so my name's Christina Trefani. Um, I am a small business owner here in Virginia Beach. I own an eco-friendly um, retail business, and I also do consulting work in the marine debris field. So I do spend a lot of time on our local beaches um, all over Virginia. And, and I'm also the Director of Environmental Affairs for Surfrider Foundation, the Virginia Beach chapter. Awesome. So we wanted to know uh, how you feel about the proposed drilling off the coast of Virginia and in the Atlantic. Um, do you think it's a good idea? Should we be doing that? How do you feel about it? <laughs> well, having had the opportunity to um, visit so many of our beaches, um, not just here in Virginia Beach, but also on the eastern shore of Virginia, um, our coastline is way too precious to risk. It, um, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, we re really need to put our resources into exploring more renewable energy, more sustainable energy. Um, I also, as far as Surfrider Foundation is concerned, our stance is that drilling is just not the answer. Um, we have a di very diverse ecosystem. We have a diversity of um, wildlife out here, uh, shorebirds. We're in the migratory pass for so many shorebirds. Um, we have four different species of sea turtles off our coasts here in the spring, summer, and fall. And then, you know, several species of marine mammal um, that travel through our waters. And, you know, the bottlenose dolphin is here year round now. So, um, to put these animals at risk, many of whom are not just protected, but also threatened or endangered, um, it just doesn't make sense. We just, you know, our resources here in Virginia are very valuable, very precious, and, um, you know, it's not the answer. Drilling is not the answer. Putting our coast at risk for the profits of big oil is madness especially when we have a great alternative, like offshore wind. The federal government designated a wind energy area starting 20 miles off our coast. It's an area big enough to supply 10% of our state electric needs, and it's not being used by the Navy and NASA. Dominion Power won the right to develop the area and could begin building wind farms in about five years. The 2,000 megawatts of wind energy the area could provide is enough to supply at least half a million homes without toxic sludge or oil spills. And we won't run out of wind. Hey y'all, I'm Zach Jarjura, Hampton Roads organizer with the Virginia chapter of the Sierra Club. By now you've heard a lot of reasons why offshore drilling is a terrible idea for both the economy and the environment in Virginia. But I wanna leave you with a few final thoughts. I'm originally from Mississippi. And while I'm not from the Gulf Coast, I do know from my experience visiting down there after the BP spill, as well as talking with friends and family, that the oil is still there. Communities are still devastated. And we do not want to risk our special places in Virginia for something like that. But what can you do about it? Well, one thing you can do is share this video online with your friends and family. You could also host an offshore drilling house party, and I'll come show the video answer any questions that your friends and family have about drilling, and tell you how you can get even more involved. 
The best way to get looped into any of these efforts is to join our offshore drilling action team, which is simple. All you do is go to tinyurl.com forward slash offshore drilling team, fill out a really short form, and I'll follow up with you with multiple ways to get involved. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, to stop this, we need everyone. Thank you.